So if I go here and I record some message, test this, this is a test for YouTube, this is such an amazing test. We see also the transcription, test test, this is a test for YouTube, this is such an amazing test, great. How to build AI Telegram chatbot with Python and OpenAI. Let's get started. The first thing we need to do is essentially go to Botfather and we'll see this link. We go to open this, we click start, we click new bot and let's give it some name, bot AI TG. After we created this, we have this token and we're just gonna copy. The next thing we'll need is the OpenAI key. Go to this link, go to OpenAI, put your credit card and you'll get an OpenAI key. The next thing we need is these two requirements, the OpenAI package and the Python Telegram bot. And if we go to this link actually, we can see that we can send a message and now it all works, so make sure that you do this. And now let's get started with some basic examples. So the first thing we do is remember the Telegram token, go to create an .env file and put it there and call it Telegram token. And this will just load your token. So we are gonna start with basic examples. Okay, first how to connect it simply with Python, there will be no AI, then how to connect it to the voice uh, features, voice messages, and then how to build some kind of a sales bot uh, with AI and everything. So let's first, uh, run this and I'll then explain each step of the way. So I run and I go and send a message. We see here the start button, I click start. And I will see, welcome, how are you? Good. What's up? I'm here to help you with blah, blah, blah. Okay, something I put here. Great, so what's actually happening here? So, so the first things that we do is we set up our app with Telegram token and honestly, uh, this Telegram integration is one of the easiest integrations uh, I've ever seen, like in terms of connecting to other applications, so it's great. Then we had this command handler and message handlers. The difference is that you saw the button that I had to click, so if you had more commands, you will be able to have more buttons and it's basically easier to get started with this bot. And the message handler is just handling messages. So we direct both of these to this uh, handle message function. And in short, these callbacks are allowing us to control the flow. So whenever we get a message with the command start, whenever we click the button start, it will get to this callback. So then we can handle the, the conversation. And this message handler is basically handling simple messages and we are using this filter. So this filter is saying, give me only text messages and don't give me command messages. So because we do this, this will enter the start command and any other command will not be handled using this function. And actually it would be better to separate this to a different function, something like handle start. So we don't need to do things like check if it contains start because whenever the user will say start, it will actually send this message. And then we do run pooling. Run pooling is just running in the background. As you can see, it's consistently running and pulling messages. Every time that we have new message, it's gonna pull it. And here I just added a basic logic, okay? So we go and we import Telegram package that we imported, so this one. Then we go, we take the user message by update message text, and we just check like, if there is a start in the message, we go and say, hey, how are you? If the user mentioning WhatsApp, then we give it some fixed message and we just use the context bot send message to send the message back to the user. So pretty basic example. Now let's get started with some AI. So next we are building an AI transcript. Essentially we do the same as we did before. Just we take the open AI key and we put it here. Make sure you put it in your .env file. And then let's run some example to see how it works. So if I go here and I record some message, Test, test, this is a test for YouTube. This is such an amazing test. We see that it created a file here, file zero.oga, and we see also the transcription. Test, test, this is a test for YouTube. This is such an amazing test, great. So what's happening here? We do the same thing as we did before. We initialize the application. And this time we have two filters. So we use text and we use also voice and we send the results to handle message. We add the handler and we run the pooling. So every time we have new messages coming, we can handle those and it will go to the handle message function. What the handle message function is doing is doing a few things. So first it checks 
if there is voice in the message or text. If there is text, we don't really do anything. If it's a voice, we call the transcribed voice message. And if it's something else, we just say something like we cannot process this type of messages. So we go to the transcribed voice message and here we're just getting the file that um, from the voice. So file ID is zero in this case. We download this to our own machine. So it's this one. Now you don't really have to do this step. It's just saving the file to, to wave. So it's easier to play it on your computer. But now all we do is we get the client that we from OpenAI. We call the audio transcriptions API and you create new audio. We send it the voice file that we got from Telegram and we get the result from the AI transcription.txt and the result is in text. And now we just clean up the files that we downloaded so you know it's not cluttering our computer. We return it and we just print it in this case. But you know, I leave I leave it to your imagination what you can do with this. You can then after the transcription, you can send it to some AI that is maybe turning this to content or maybe sending some email or doing something like it's really like an AI voice agent that you can use for your uh, own usages, maybe internally, externally, whatever. And finally, let's take a look at this example. So here I created a simple giveaway sales bot. And uh, let's first see how it works. So we're starting here a new chat and I'm going to click start. And now the bot is telling me to put the word magic. So let's put the word magic. Actually, let's not put the word magic. Let's put something else. One, two, three, three. And it says, okay, put the word magic to receive some LinkedIn client giveaway. I'm putting the word magic. And then it says, hey, my name in Telegram, here is your blah, 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 some text that I put and some link, enjoy. Congratulations, okay, maybe we can change this, but yeah. I'm curious what's your experience been like finding clients on LinkedIn? Um, so let's, can't find them. Content. So I just sent some a few messages here and basically the bot is trying to ask us questions about finding clients. And in the end, what it says is it's trying to book a call with us. So it's, uh, would you be interested in scheduling a call and so on? And then it will book us. Um, and essentially what you see here is we're just taking the same messages, everything that the user is sending us, it's essentially getting sent to the OpenAI API. And you can imagine that it's basically the same as ChatGPT just on Telegram. So if I even do one plus one or one plus three equals, then it's responding with four. It's because I didn't add some restrictions, but let's get through what is happening here. So yeah, so we do the same setup. Uh, here we also have some loggers so we can see all the requests here. And we also have user states and user histories. Now the basic, setup is the same as we did before and we have two handlers we have the start handler and we have the message handler and we also listen to the new messages so in the start handler all we do is just telling the the user welcome i'm here to help you and say the word magic to get your special giveaway after that we have the handle message function and now the difference is that we also take the user id we have this chat histories um, dictionary that is storing per user ID. So we essentially save the chat history per user before it gets started. So if there is nothing, we just initialize it. And if he puts, if the user put the word magic, then we do this logic. First of all, we check if they receive the giveaway. If not, we send it by calling this, this function, which is just the giveaway message that we chose to, to put. Um, if we already got this, so we do something like you already received it, I'll send it again um, and we just send the same message. Great. But also what it's doing is it's keeping the state based on the stage, based on the user ID. So when we send the message, we put like post giveaway and we know that we stopped in the state of post giveaway. What we then do is we ask some questions. So in this case, we ask what's your experience finding clients on LinkedIn and we send it back to the user. And we also keep this message on our chat history. And what we do here, if you notice, if you know OpenAI API, what we do here is that we, this is how OpenAI is calling the assistant. 
Okay, so when we send the message as the user, we put it as user, the role is user. When it's the assistant, we put the assistant. So when we send the message as initial message to the user, we just put it as the assistant. So now when we have the chat history, we can see that, the, the, that this is the, the message. And the reason why we do this is, I'll tell you in a moment. So, okay, now we sent the giveaway, great. Now the user is sending like a response to what's your experience been like with finding clients. So obviously it's not containing magic. So we are gonna go to this stage. So it's getting the user message and essentially adding this to the history. So if we'll take a look, this is the giveaway. This is the response of the user. And now what we do is just take this history. We take the system prompt, which is just a simple, you know, you're an helpful assistant for LinkedIn client acquisition. Your goal is to gently explore the challenges of the user in regarding to getting clients on, on LinkedIn without being too pushy. Ask open-ended questions. And if they express difficulties, suggest to book a call um, and some things like this. Very basic prompt, like nothing. You can do way more things. You can even use the AI assistance API, give it some knowledge base, give it some FAQ. But just for the example, we keep it simple. So we take the history, we take the prompt and we just call the OpenAI API with, in this case, 4.0 mini. We take the response and we add this also to the history and we send it back to the user. This is how we mimic the ChatGPT flow essentially. And now after we get the message from the AI, we send it back to the user. So if we keep running this, what we see is the following. So we got the AI message. Okay, this is just how the API is working. If you need more information about using the OpenAI API, I will link a video that is related more to this so we can learn more about this. But this is essentially the message that the user gave us back. So if we take a look at the messages overall, so this is how our histories look looks like. It's basically congratulations, the giveaway. User is saying everything is good. The AI is saying something like, that's great to hear. What do you, what con what do you think contributed to your success? And so on and so on. We can already see that it's a bit asking too many questions and it might not be a good scenario for the real world, but of course we can tweak it. And then all we do is we send it back to the user. So essentially every time that we get new messages, we process this with the AI. On top of this, the AI can see the history before because we send the old history plus the new message. And this is the structure. And we essentially get it back to the user. That's it. So you can imagine that we have the telegram, we have the user sending messages and we kind of inject the open AI in between, including our own logic so we can get the conversation going in the direction that we want it to go. And now this is very basic logic. We just check if the AI decided to say something with book or schedule, we move the user state to booking and we say something like, you know, it sounds like you might benefit from more in-depth conversation. Would you be happy? Would you be interested in scheduling a call and so on and so on in real world application? What will be here is that maybe we'll give some different different variations to call to actions. We will also have some logic that actually goes to our calendar, checking if there is availability this week for three slots, we'll give it back to the user. The user will get back what time he wants to schedule and it will automatically schedule in the calendar in a real case, right? And that's basically it. So in short, what this sales bot is doing is, is giving a giveaway to the user. The giveaway is related to some problem, of course, then the assistant is exploring if the user has some problems. Every time that we do a message to the user, every time the, the user is getting us a message, we process this with the OpenAI API. We send back the response to the user and we also save it on our own chat history. Now, if we restart this application, the chat history will be gone and also everything will be gone. So we need to start from zero. This is why in a real life scenario, you would put it in a database and you do all sorts of extra things. And that's it. That's how you connect Telegram with OpenAI and Python. Hope you learned something new. If you like videos like this, make sure to like this video, subscribe, and I'm sure that you're gonna like this next video, so go watch it next. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.